I am David. I'm Joanna. We are the Herobedians Virtual Church Media.com, and today we're going to do part two of really table talk on relationships. And the name of our broadcast is In His Presence, where all things are, are possible. I'd love my wife to begin by singing just to release the presence of God because our hearts need to be pulled into Him to be able to receive what we have for you today. Mm -hmm. And it's all good. That's right, it's all good. So I'm gonna just uh, sing the Hebrew blessing. And I want you to close your eyes right now. And I want you to just receive from the Lord because today God has a very special message for you. And He wants you to receive a new, fresh perspective. So Father, I just pray right now over our friend who's watching or listening. And I just release and pray your anointing to touch them to speak to them and to minister to them right now, Lord. Open their eyes to see what you need them to see. Open your ears to hear what you need them to hear in the eye of their heart and the ears of understanding. And this is a Hebrew blessing and it's God's blessing to you and your blessing unto him. And it means the Lord our God, blessed is the Lord our God. King of the universe, blessed is his holy name. Adonai loves you as you love him, and he's healing your land. Baruch Hashem Adonai Eloheinu Leulam Baruch Hashem Adonai Eloheinu Leulam Ani Ohev Oktach Ani Ohev Oktach I love you so, says the Lord And I'm healing your land Amen Oh, Thank so, you, Lord. So beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Well, in this atmosphere, in this presence, we just want to talk about relationships. And in our earlier video that we'd done, the earlier program, we talked about how um, there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 11, and I encourage you to read it in your spare time. But mm -hmm. in verse 5 and 6, it talks about there's a time to embrace mm -hmm and a time to refrain from embracing. Mm -hmm. And there may be a time in a relationship where you have to refrain from embracing. That doesn't mean you love your spouse any less. It just is a time of pause in that arena. And so there's also a time when we need to really embrace somebody when they're hurting, even when they've done something wrong because they need that love. We also talked about how sometimes you come home and you don't have 100% energy units at the end of a day. Or even when you wake up in the morning, you may not. And so marriage is rarely 50-50. It might be 80-20 one day. She might have 80, you might have 20, but together you make up 100 energy units or you know, wisdom units. And other days it might be just the opposite or sometimes it's 45-55. And when we come home after I've been in the marketplace or ministry or hospital visits or in the recording studio or writing, whatever that might be, I might be completely drained and I might be at say 15 energy units. Mm -hmm. And I come home and she says, how are you doing? How was your day? I said, oh, I'm really drained. You know, I had this and that happen. And she says, where are you at? And I said, I've got about 15. And she says, it's okay, I got you covered. I've had a great day, I'm at 85. Mm -hmm. And other times she might be at 15 or 20 or 25. I might be at, you know, 75 or 85. So I've got her covered the two are one flesh but if we're in a situation where she's at 25 and i'm at 20 or 30 what happens is we have less than 100 so that's mm -hmm. not the time for us to discuss serious issues that's a time for us to recharge and sometimes we just take a night off and go out and get some appetizers and have some tea and just relax mm -hmm. or we go to the park or we go for a walk out in nature or we just call a night early and just cuddle and just hang out with each other until we're recharged 
we do not discharge out of our mouth our angst or anger. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible says, beware lest any root of bitterness, like resentment, come in, lay roots, spring up, and cause trouble, and thereby many become defiled. Mm -hmm. Some of the times where we've had what I refer to as intense fellowship. Yes. <laughs> we don't call it arguments. We just call it intense fellowship. I would say almost every time if we look back on that, mm -hmm. it's because we were operating together less than 100. So we've learned over the years of almost a decade of being together and a really wonderful marriage and that there is a time and a season for everything under the sun. There's some, sometimes you just don't discuss certain things yet. And what I love about my wife, amongst the many other mm -hmm. things I love about my wife, Joanna, is if I'm operating beneath that 100 points collectively and I do or say something or I take marketplace frustrations and bring them in to the marriage conversation, because mm -hmm. sometimes there are spirits of transference that happen in ministry or in the marketplace and you bring them into the marriage for discussion. Well, and sometimes, you know, you, you, you've had a hard day and you're frustrated and you're angry and then we, have, we can bring that home into the house and then we can transfer that onto our spouse in accusatory tones or snarky tones, you know, and we're not meaning to be snarky, yeah. right? But it comes out that way. And so that's where we have to be careful to be able to differentiate, okay, let's talk about what the snarky tone is, you know, right. is there something, you know, that we right. need to talk about or is, did something happen right. at work or did something happen in the ministry, whatever it is. Sure. But see, that's where communication is really important because otherwise, if you don't talk about it, then the enemy comes in and whispers mm. in your ear and says, oh, he was rude to you, he was snarky, or oh, she was bratty, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, he was, or yeah, she did that and she didn't appreciate. So now what happens? Your mind has gone onto a different track. Mm -hmm. One other thing is interesting is the enemy will often speak to you. I've got a book called Seven Different Kinds of Voices. Get it on Amazon or on our website. And I've also got one called 25 Different Ways in Which God Speaks, Hearing God 25 Different Ways. But one of the things that we learn is to recognize God's voice amongst all the other voices of the world mm -hmm. that contend or vie for our attention. Right. And so the enemy, when he speaks, rarely says, well, she did that and she did that. Um, normally what he says is, I didn't like the way she said that. So he speaks first person in our ear or in our mind so we think it's our own thought and it's not. So don't partner with thoughts that are not in line with Scripture. And if they are coming from you, and sometimes they do, out of mm -hmm. offense or otherwise, what happens is we need to repent. Take every thought under the captivity of Christ, casting down every vain imagination and every high and pretentious thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not keep track of wrongs it always thinks the best about people and i want to talk about not keeping track of wrongs my wife's amazing like if i do something and we discuss it and i say she says you know you did this i'm like i'm sorry i'll do better next time she's like okay we move on never is it brought up again it's not like there's a stack of wrongs and you hit a certain point and then you can like you know, cash them in mm -hmm. on the wrong, you know, piggy bank. Right. And the worst thing that you could possibly do to bring damage to the marriage, to the relationship, is when somebody did do something and they repented yeah. and they're truly sorry. And then you bring up, well, you did this 10 years ago, wow. but I already, I already apologized. Well, you did it, right? So now you're playing God in a mm. way and you're judging. Mm -hmm. Jesus has already forgiven him because, or her, because they've repented. So why aren't you forgiving them? Why are you continually bringing it up? What's the deeper root in it for you behind that? Let's rest and park there for a second because a lot of times the things that we do or our perspective or perception of things, mm -hmm. we literally 
are wounded and hurting people hurt people. Wounded people wound other people. So if you feel like lashing out or getting even, it's because you're still wounded. Go to the Lord and get healing. Get a prayer partner. If you're a woman, get another woman as a prayer partner. If you're a man, have a man that's a prayer partner. And if you don't know where one of those are at, ask the Lord to bring you an accountability partner, a prayer partner. The Bible says we're too agreeous touching anything on earth, Matthew 18, 19, and 20. When there's the prayer of agreement, one can put a thousand a flight, two can chase mm -hmm. 10,000. That means there's exponential authority in agreement and prayer. Find somebody you can agree with. You know, God will only answer certain prayers when there's the prayer of agreement mm -hmm. in place. If I can't get a prayer answered from the Lord, I go find somebody to agree with. And here's one of the reasons why a lot of times you can't get a prayer answered alone. And this be is big. Because, yeah, it, because you may not be in 100% alignment. Or there may be something where you have to confess your faults one to another, pray for one another, you mm -hmm. might be healed. Because we're to agree concerning anything on earth, it will be done for them by our Father which is in heaven, Matthew 18, 19. But two in the mind of Christ cannot agree on something that's not the will of God. Right. Somebody may not have the mind, the genius mind of Christ on the matter. They might have their own will in the matter or the timings off or their perspective on it or their desire for the prayer to be answered isn't a heavenly or a godly desire, but God will give you the desires of your heart when you and I delight ourselves in him because he changes our heart into his heart and then he gives a lot mm -hmm. of it. So one thing is sometimes you need that prayer of agreement because God's aligning you with his highest will. The other time is God makes us dependent on him vertically, but he also often makes us interdependent upon other people within the body of Christ so that we don't think we're all that in a bag of chips. I've got God and he's got me. God plus one's a majority. I don't need none of these people. Oh no, he'll make you reliant upon him first in vertical relationship and reliant at times or independent, dependent upon him, but interdependent upon other members to keep you and me humble and appreciative of other people. Sometimes he'll heal you directly. Other times he'll require you to go somewhere for somebody to pray or to prophesy or to pray the prayer of agreement or to lay hands on. So if God did it one way this time, don't think he's going to necessarily do it that way next time. It, dependent on, on God and interdependent upon other mm -hmm. people. And when there's strife in the marriage, beware. If there's strife, it will hinder your prayers. And we found that when mm -hmm. any strife comes in, our prayers are hindered, but when we get it to the cross and we get that laughter back and that joy, bam, God answers those prayers back to back. He does. Now, there's also a way to address the situation. Mm. For example, um, when we were dating, we had some very interesting dynamics happening. Um, very interesting. Because David was, you know, uh, a catch and a uh, so many women uh, were after him. And my wife was twice the catch. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. And so anyways, yeah, I even had women praying I would die. So In Christian love, In Christian of course. love in the name of Jesus. Yes, this is true. <laughs> and this is not isolated, by the way. By the way, we call that Pentecostal charismatic witchcraft. Yes. And you don't want to do it. No. Anyways, and so here's what happened. It was we would have women who would uh, accuse him of flirting with them. Now, what's really funny is, and it was one situation that this happened, well, there was a couple, but this particular one, we were at a, at a Bible study. Now, I was with him the entire time, okay? So I saw with my eyes and I heard with my ears. And, and these women, they were, you know, they were broken and mm. they were wanting a husband and they weren't used to having someone just be kind you know, look you in the eye, you know, be it, be, and listen to what they're saying. And so they misread David's kindness and I thought he was flirting with them. Now, here's what's interesting. It got brought to my attention and the concerns were addressed. And I was able to validate that I, in fact, I was there and I witnessed it and I was able to name everyone who did this. Now, 
I had a choice. Mm -hmm. I could have gone to him and and had an attitude and a tone. I could have said, well, you know, you were accused of flirting and you did this and you did that, mm -hmm. right? Now what have I done by just saying you, you, you with a tone? But instead I said, you know, I know your character mm -hmm. and I was there and I know that that's not what happened. And, um, and then we had another time where someone came. And by the way, God cleaned that whole thing oh, up, he did. vindicated it, us, yes. and some of those people are our best friends today because they grew through that. Yeah. So if several people accuse you of something, you're normally the common denominator. Correct. Unless there is a spirit in that group, mm -hmm. and they are the common denominator. And so here you showed acts of kindness and look people in the eye and listen. And because of that, they misread that kindness, the kindness of Christ. They were drawn to that and then thought, oh, well, Joanna's you got to be careful for him because he's kind. Anyway, it's just very interesting. I had it happen in another situation and God cleaned that whole mess up. Now, the person that I was prior to being born again in 1990 was a different person. But 25 years being single and celibate waiting on my bride, I'm not going to allow that spirit back in right, my life. Right, he's not yeah. going to mess that yeah. up. And, um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this up, ladies, because you know, you, there are, you're going to have intense fellowship with your spouse. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen, right? Because like, you know, we talked about in the first segment, God made marriages in heaven and they're worked out on earth. And, and we, God makes, you know, marriages are made in heaven, so is thunder and lightning. Exactly. <laughs> so how do you handle when there is a snarky attitude, mm -hmm. there is a town or your, sp your husband's angry and frustrated. So here's a, a big tip for you and, I, and try it and I want you to email us as to what your experience was. So the next time your spouse is ang appears angry and frustrated, I want you to just sit them down. Say, honey, can I rub your feet? Start rubbing his feet. Oh, I'm not gonna rub his feet. Right, we're gonna get rid of that attitude. So we're gonna lay down aside our stuff for Make now. Make him rub my feet. He should rub my feet first. Somebody's gotta take initiative. And when you take initiative, it breaks that spirit. Remember, when we were born into the earth, we were dropped right in the middle of an angel war. Good versus evil, and we're what the war is over. Are you allowing the enemy to win the war over your soul and over your marriage, or are you yielding to the Lord and you're going to defeat the enemy with an act of kindness. We love Jesus because he mm -hmm. first loved us. While we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. And if you'll die to self on matters, it will begin to fill the love tank of your spouse. And then they'll have energy units to begin to fill you back up. Mm -hmm. So I, I just had to. No, share that, that. that's really good. I, I agree with that. And so. You're rubbing his feet and then you just say, you know, it, it seems like, is there anything that you feel stressed about right now? You know, what happened at work? What, you know, what, what's, what, are you, what are you frustrated about? And then give him the opportunity to open up because he will. And so you will address his snarky behavior, mm. but not in that moment because there's a reason he was acting this way. There was a reason typically, and I'm not, I'm talking about a healthy relationship. Yeah. I'm not talking about in a relationship where there's abuse, emotional abuse, verbal abuse, all that kind right. of stuff. We're talking about a healthy relationship. We're not normal. talking about being a doormat, but no. we are talking about laying our lives down one for another in love. Right. And I'll give you a personal example. You know, we, we had a moment where he had a very edgy tone and snapped at me and was very snarky. And I, I don't remember this. It's under the blood. <laughs> That's <laughs> I right. see a forgetfulness. There's a sign up that says no fishing. Exactly. Now, I had two choices in that moment I, because my first response was, oh, you did not just say that to me. And so I calmed down. I went and I prayed. And see, I have with the Lord, he's my psychologist. Mm -hmm. Because when I get upset about something, Lord, I pray you convict him. Slap him in the face and show him, Lord. And by the way, God does answer those prayers. Yes, you know, the does. last thing I would want to be is crossways with my wife because she has a great relationship with the Lord. And remember, my wife is my wife, but she's God's daughter. Mm -hmm. And you want to treat God's daughter like the queen that she is. And every girl is a princess or a queen, a princess of the king of heaven. And instead of us being... Uh, 
men that prey on women, we need to be knights that protect right. women mm -hmm. and pray for women. And when you have that attitude and perspective that every woman is God's daughter, you'll have a different perspective on how you treat them. So we want to protect, pray for, never pray on, and we want to be those that are extensions of God's love in the earth, just like if it was your daughter. Mm -hmm. So then once once I worked through my emotions, you know. Mm -hmm. You didn't not, allow a root of bitterness to come right, in. Right, and I didn't allow root of bitterness to come in. Then later I'll say, you know, honey, is there something that you were feeling stressed out about? And and then he'll talk about it. And then I and then later I'll say, okay, well, you know, when when this was said, mm -hmm. notice I'm not saying, well, you know, when you said this and da 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 da. I'll say, you know, I know you didn't mean mm. to come across uh, as edgy and hurt my feelings with, with the words that you spoke. Um, I just want to let you know that I, that's how I felt. And, and so now, I, and then he'll go, oh, wow, I'm really sorry. Mm. I was blah, 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 or whatever it is. And he'll repent and he'll apologize. Mm -hmm. But if I were to come to him in a manner where, you know, you know, I didn't appreciate what you said and you did this. And can you see how that's going to put him on edge? And so, and men, vice versa, mm -hmm. you know, if, if your, if your spouse, if your wife has said something to you, that's hurtful, you know, this is, it, it applies both ways. So I want to share this with you. Did you notice how Joanna assumed the best love always hopes it always trusts. It doesn't keep track of wrongs. It, it, so here's what happened. She asked me, she says, I know that you didn't mean to do this. Is there something going on inquisitively, she asked, not accusatory. Is there something going on? Mm -hmm. Is there something going on inquisitively? Jesus never answered an accusatory question unless he responded with another question. Well, I'll give you an example. Anytime somebody came to Jesus with an inquisitive, they wanted to know question, he would answer. But when they came accusatorily, he didn't respond in the same way. So if I ask my spouse, you know, is there something going on with you? What's going on? You're not, you're not, you don't seem yourself. Well, this happened, I just got bad news, this and that. Or if I say, is there something going on with you? Accusatorily, now her spirit is repelled. A wall is up, a potential offense comes, it builds offense. Right. But asking inquisitively, because I really wanna know. You know, my brother's amazing. He really sells by asking questions, and he's so gifted at it. And he asks a question that then I have to respond to, and it makes me think. And it's because he really does want to know the answer. And if he has a different perspective than I do on it, he asks questions inquisitively. And sometimes I'm like, I don't know why I believe that. That's a really good point. Let me research. And we learn together. But if he asked me those questions accusatorily, you're going to be, be put on the defensive. Yeah. Right. And I want to share another little practical example, too. So when we were dating, uh, he was on the phone mm -hmm. because a lot of his, you know, he's praying. He's always on the phone because he's prayer, praying, working, what have you. And so he left me on hold when I called and he left me on the eternal hold. <laughs> and I'm like hanging on, hanging on. And I'm thinking, OK, he's just left me on hold. Now, I had two ways I could handle this, right? because it did need to get addressed. So I could have handled it when I talked to him and said, you know, it, it, you were so rude the way that you left me on hold. I can't believe you left me on hold like that. Now, what do you think his response would have been had mm -hmm. I talked to him like that? Versus, hey, you know, David, I know you're super busy and I know you have to take phone calls. Can you do me a favor? Sure. And I said, you know, next time we're on the call and somebody calls and you need to take that call, Instead of leaving me on hold, can you please just let me know, I gotta take this call and I'll call you back. And I'm fine with that because I know you have to take the call versus leaving me on hold because my time is also very important and I, and, you know, I, I know you didn't intentionally do that. To, you didn't intentionally mean to disrespect me. Well, he was like, oh, wow, you know, I didn't intentionally do that. I didn't realize that, you know, you, that's how it, blah, blah, blah. So see, there's two ways that I handled that. Well, one way that I handled that and that got great results. And the other thing is what she didn't know at the time is there was an emergency on the other line and I couldn't get off the call at that point. Now, if this occurs currently, 
I'll text her while I'm on that call. I can't get off the call. I'll have to call you back. Mm -hmm. So it's just communication is the key that unlocks the doors to God's love to be in the marriage. Mm -hmm. And so it's about esteeming one another <laughs> better than ourselves, honoring one another, and then always believing the best about each other. I know you didn't mean to do this. However, this is how it made me feel. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to make you feel that way. I had no idea it had that kind of impact. I'll do better. I won't do that again. And so through those, we learned. But asking questions inquisitively, coming to the conflict resolution table. And assuming the best. And we're going to pray for you because this is one key thing that I learned in this training that I took um, about how to have a crucial conversation with someone. Is you go into that conversation with the intention to work it out yeah. and you assume the best. Repeat that. With the intention to, to work it out and assume the best. Not to be a man breaker or a woman breaker, but to work it out. So many marriages could be restored if the intention is to work it out in the beginning. Let's pray because yes. we're going to run out of time. All right. So Heavenly Father, we just lift up our brothers and sisters to you right now. We lift up every marriage in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We speak healing right now, restoration right now. Lord, I pray that where there's been miscommunication, misunderstanding, or words that have hurt, we just release forgiveness right now. We release, release your compassion. We pray for the roots of bitterness to be broken, Lord God, and for bonds to be reestablished. And Lord, I thank you for the gift of forgiveness that you gave us. While we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. So we forgive others. God is, even as Jesus, God was in Christ reconciling the world back unto himself, not holding their sins against him, even though, even now he's committed unto you, 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19, the ministry of reconciliation. So I release the anointing for reconciliation into your marriage yes. and into your relationships yes. in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Virtualchurchmedia.com. Hi, I'm David Hirabidi in virtualchurchmedia.com. My wife and I have been on TV and also on social media for years now, equipping the saints for the work of ministry. We love to give the gospel at no cost. In fact, we've got a mobile app that's very robust, one-year Bible reading program, books, audio books, and so much more. It's at no cost, you can get it at virtualchurchmedia.com, but today, I'm asking you to not only share the app with others so they can grow, but also to pay it forward. We make it available at no cost, but somebody's paid a price. Will you help pay it forward? Partner with us today, or one-time gift, at Virtual Church media.com. Thank you in advance. In my book, What the Bible Really Says About Tongues, reveals the biblical answers. You'll learn how to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, get your prayer language, and you'll also be able to understand with clarity the four different biblical types of speaking in tongues. What is that, you might ask? Download our mobile app today and you can read the book and also get it in audio format at no cost virtual church media. Dot com. Mm -hmm.